Hey there Cosmic Warriors and welcome back to another video. Okay so in today's video we are going to be taking a look at Chiron in the fifth house. So what we're going to do is we're going to address the wound itself associated with Chiron in the fifth house but then we're going to look at some practical tips and advice on how to heal. However, before we do get started, if you would like to know more information all about your Chiron sign along with your Chiron house as well as your Virgo house within your natal birth chart and the sixth house respectfully, then I have created a Virgo season slash archetype ebook. So what I am going to do is I'm going to provide a link to that ebook in the description box below so that you can pick up your copy today. Alright then, so with all those introductions out of the way, Chiron in the fifth house. Let's do this. So what I am coming to notice if you have Chiron in the fifth house is that this wound may be an association with your own childlike nature, with your own childlike spirit. So for example, it may have been, there may have been a situation where you were rejected by other children that you would play with. So this could have been children within your area, children during recess at school, children within a certain group or club that you would attend, just anywhere <laughs> where there's children around, interacting with those children may have just been quite difficult or a bit unsettling and uncomfortable. Maybe children would tease you and maybe your own childlike nature wasn't encouraged. So let's put this into perspective of you playing with others. Instead of joining in on the fun and games, it was more you being quite withdrawn or as you would go into play, another child would laugh at you or another child would bully you, tease you, just other children might have just been quite mean to you, okay? Could have also been a situation where if you decided to join a certain recreational pursuit or a certain hobby, so for example if we were to look at maybe you joined the cheerleading team, the cheerleading squad, and that was something that you knew that you really wanted to do it and you were excited about it, but it turned into quite a hurtful, painful thing where you couldn't quite feel like you were part of it. There's just something about your own individuality being bruised here, being a little bit wounded here, where even you going forward to bring like that spirit, bring the joy, bring the happiness into it, if that joy and happiness was just sucked, sucked right out of that activity that you were going into. Furthering on from this as well, if we were to look at your creation, so perhaps you went to create your own art piece or create music or create a keychain or a key ring. You know how kids, whatever, of course, being the age they are, you're taught in art class or crafts how to make little things. Um, and they're just tiny little simple things. That thing that you created, maybe you just didn't think it was good enough or that it was anything special or maybe you were made to believe that it wasn't that special. This could have been a situation where you were creating something and then the child next to you was creating something. But that child next to you they got more praise, they were celebrated more, their thing was seen as such a great creation. Your thing could have also been seen as a great creation but you may have felt within yourself that but theirs is so much better though. And so that creates a bit of insecurity 
Because if you see this other child, or if you saw this other child being praised more than you, then that might have resulted in you feeling like the spotlight was being taken off you and placed onto them. So maybe you grew up with this mentality that the spotlight was always forever going to be on other children or other people besides you. And maybe because of these things, whenever the spotlight actually is on you, whenever you are really appreciated and applauded and celebrated for what you create, then you still don't recognize it. There can be this tendency here of you just constantly comparing what you create against what other people create. And then this also can lead to this self-conscious feeling, like just always being self-conscious of what you're creating or being self-conscious of how you're expressing yourself, being self-conscious of how you play or join in on the games and the fun with other children because you're always just self-conscious of, well, well, will they let me play? Will they have fun with me? Or are they just going to reject me like other children did? Or, you know, there's just this inability to properly feel secure in what you're creating, to properly feel secure in your own expression of you. Like it's just not good enough or like there's always something that needs to be fixed about how you express yourself. So following on from this, when it comes to self-expression, you may have experienced a rejection in association with how you would express yourself. Maybe as you did go to express yourself whenever you were younger, somebody looked at you and thought like, oh, you're just being dramatic, you know? You're being too flamboyant. Maybe it was a situation of that person questioning, well, who do you think you are? And, well, if you were simply just trying to express what you really thought or what you really felt, and that was just, you know, dramatic and being over the top and just attention seeking and egotistic was just placed on you, then that can be really frustrating because if you had these labels placed on you whenever you were just simply trying to join in or just be yourself then that's really hard and and that in itself can then make you kind of overthink like whenever you do go to express yourself after that oh my gosh am i am i doing this for attention and you may constantly just have this dialogue with yourself of like oh, I just, I literally just want to create this. I literally just want to, you know, step into this new performance or I, I want to join this group or I want to do this thing. But is this just for my ego? Is this just me being egotistic? And then it becomes this undeserving feeling of like, you can't do certain things because you're afraid of what other people are going to think of you because you're afraid that people are just going to label you as dramatic or egotistic and seeking attention. But yet, on the other side of this, there's this tendency of you lacking confidence, lacking self-confidence. So it may look like, or you may convince yourself that you're not a confident person, but is it that this lack of confidence is coming from a fear of being rejected for you just being yourself. To be in a scenario around other children growing up where you know, like, you know you have a lot to say, you know you have a lot to bring, and you're just, you're just bringing out all of your creativity. But then for those children to look at you and just be like, you're just being dramatic, you just want attention. You just want the validation. Well, nah, nah, nah. You know, it can create jealousy even, you know? It can, cre it can create these, oh, like, petty, just petty disputes. And then it turns into this even competitive thing. But all the while, all you were wanting to do was just share, like, give. Just be yourself <laughs> around other people that maybe were a little bit insecure with themselves to shoot you down so quickly. And then this creates an insecurity within you. 
and then you may feel like there is something literally wrong with you that you just do not have that creative spark anymore that if that was rejected your own creative spark was rejected then that can create this unsettling feeling this uncomfortable feeling with you just wanting to let it out therefore if you have Chiron in the fifth house you might just find it really difficult to let go to let go of those criticisms to let go of the judgments that you place upon you and just constantly just wanting to fix your ego maybe there's something to be said about you always thinking that you need to fix your egotistic ways or thinking that the things you create are just coming from your ego and so you're not deserving of doing those things because the ego is bad you know you might have grown up with this feeling like your ego is bad that it's not okay for you to be yourself it's not okay to express the ego but you know it, it is it is and you know when it comes to this term ego We need the ego. I wouldn't be speaking here right now if not for my ego. Anybody watching this video right now, you wouldn't be here if not for your ego. Our ego is important, our personality is important and we seem to be living today as, well, hmm, certain people seem to be expressing themselves in a way that says, I am so above the ego, like, I'm transcending my ego and I'm into higher states of consciousness. Like, I'm so connected with Source that I'm leaving behind the ego. I'm sorry, but even that same mentality is ego. It is ego. So, Chiron in the fifth house, let your ego shine. <laughs> of course, I know it's good to be aware of being completely egotistic to the point where you just do not care about other people, right? There's balance needed here. <laughs> There's being aware of using the ego for destructive ways to tear people down. And maybe people use their own ego to pull you down because they, they didn't have enough security within themselves to lift themselves up. They couldn't see their own creative self-expression, so they chose to tear yours down. Another thing, however, to mention with Kara in the fifth house is to do with dating and romance. So the fifth house can give an indication into how we date and the types of people we may be attracted to. So with Chiron in the fifth, you may attract some pretty insecure lovers into your life. You may attract wounded lovers, lovers who you think need fixing, need healing. So with that in mind, you may attract a lover who, because they're not secure enough in themselves, they may try to bring you down with them. But you giving in to being brought down with them also shows your lack of security. So there is a possibility here with Chiron in the fifth house. But then again, this could be to the point where you have been really deeply hurt or rejected by a lover. This could be a situation where you had a crush on someone in school or a child when you were growing up. You really had a big fat crush on them and you got really excited and giddy around them. But then they didn't like you back. They didn't feel the same way. Then again, this could be a situation where you are afraid to take risks on relationships or dating people. Maybe again, out of a lack of love for yourself, feeling unworthy. Just noticing here that you may not see what you actually have to bring, have to offer within a romantic affair. Because you don't see those things within yourself, you may attract certain partners who are just, just douchebags. Another thing to mention with this placement is, well, in relation with sports. So, when it came to sports, maybe you faced a rejection there. Maybe you didn't feel like you were really part of that team or 
your individual performance was was even needed or required. It was almost like you had this mentality of, well, why am I here anyway? I'm not really bringing anything special to the table. And maybe you seek that from others for someone to actually tell you that you're doing a really good job. But of course, the key to this worthiness or feeling um, more secure is for you to recognize the, the the individual part that you play, okay? But still, furthering on from earlier, I mentioned how with spur time hobbies and things, I connected that in with cheerleading. So cheerleading could also come under the sports area, but still looking at hobbies, we could use an example here of when it came to singing or performing or theater. There might have been a situation within your your early development where maybe you had the school part in a play. You were you were chosen within the with to take the role for this play. But due to other things um, happening, that part was taken from you, or somebody else got chosen to do it over you later down the line. Maybe you were injured. Maybe there was difficulty at home impacting it. Maybe there was a certain parental figure that literally had to take you out of that role. So that could have created a rejection. Um, it could, cre could have created this wound of, but I, I had the role, I was gonna perform so well and, and now some other child or some other person in my class is, is having this role and this, this really hurts me. And lastly, I just want to talk about children again. So whilst yes, there could have been difficulties associated with children when you were younger, but this could even be where you have a fear of having children later on in life. Or you maybe you literally cannot have children. Maybe you find out later on in life that you're not able to conceive. Um, or this could just be relating with children overall. Maybe your siblings, for example, would have their own children and you would find it really difficult to relate with those children, converse with them. But even with your own children, you may sort of fear your own children being rejected themselves. And maybe then from that fear, you may shelter them a lot, or you may be quite overprotective towards your own children. So now we have discussed the wound itself, let's look at ways to heal. And we're just gonna follow on from the most recent point that I made there at the end, is well, when it comes to your childlike nature towards your inner child, it's good for you to think of ways to bring your inner child out. So for example, if you go on to have children of your own one day, trying to join in on the fun and play with your children, rather than having this perception that they can't play or this perception that they're gonna be rejected for how they play, but to maybe get in there, get stuck in and play with them and encourage them, uplift them, also, if they are seeking attention from you, they're like, hey, mommy, hey, daddy, like, look what I'm doing. You know, rather than having this false perception that, oh, stop just seeking attention, stop being so silly, stop being like that, really just look at them and be like, oh, you're such a dork, what do you like? Oh my gosh, you wanna play? Okay, right, I'll jump in with you. Oh, really, that's what you mean, Jessica? That is incredible, literally just putting the spotlight on your child and just being a huge child with them. Not taking yourself overly seriously as a parent, not thinking that there's something inherently wrong with being fun and playful, but to bring that out and that can really help you. It can really help you. And when your child makes a creation, a drawing, a picture, whatever it is, a little bracelet at school, you know, when they run home from school to show you it and they're like, hey, look what I made. You literally just go, oh my gosh, that is the 
best thing I've ever seen, you know, just really amping them up. Of course I understand that, you know, there's also the other side of this where it's like, it's good to also not give our children false hope or like, for example, I'll give an example. Let's say your child is singing in front of you, but you, you know in the back of your mind that this child cannot sing. They, they can't sing. You, you know, you know sort of from the, the, the way people sound, if they're good or not. And you generally think, right, okay, my child cannot sing. Right, you could, of course, get them classes where they can learn how to sing and really encourage them. But if you start going, oh my gosh, you're the best singer in the world, you're so amazing. But yet you know that they could, like, they're not, they're not the best singer in the world. You also don't want to give them a false, a false perception where then they can later on go on and start singing in front of audiences and then they just get laughed at. Another example here could even be where you go and you play sports with your child or you get out there and, and into the field and kick the ball around or you go and you play at the, at the playground with your child or you go and fly a kite with your child or you take them to the sea and you do boating. Just fun activities and joining in on games and sports and recreational pursuits with your child, um, taking them to different weekend getaways or um, little holidays, just all of these different things that you can experience with a child that maybe you didn't really associate with being all that joyful, but you can bring that joy to the child that you then have. And even if you don't have a child of your own, you could go and work with children. You could go and volunteer with children. Um, you could even be a teacher yourself, you know, you could be a kindergartner teacher um, or a nursery school teacher. Um, or you could go and um, help with your friends' children, you know, if your friends have any children or if any of your family members go on to have any children, maybe you have nieces and nephews, you know, doing little things with them. And also taking it away, not necessarily just looking at children directly, but looking at the inner child within other people. So even adults, even people who are grown up and you're grown up, <laughs> <laughs> and encouraging the inner child from those grown-ups. So for example, making sure that you assign some time to go out with your friends, to have a good time, to let loose. Really, um, going out, even if, even if you've had children of your own or you're not and you're 30 years old, whatever, going out with your friends every now and then and having a drink or going to the cinema, going to the beach, going for an ice cream and even looking at entertainment and things like that. Well, you could go to the theater. You can find different things that entertain you and your friend. Um, even, <laughs> even you and your friend coming together and entertaining yourself with all the drama, all the gossip, you know? <laughs> Talking about the celebrities in Hollywood, if that's what you're into or talking about all the drama on YouTube, if that's what you're into. Just different things that both get you excited. Also when it comes to celebrations, right? So looking at how you can celebrate with your friends or with the people that you love in your life. This could be making sure that you just put the dates, all the important dates on your calendar and you're like, right, it's my friend James's birthday this day. I'm gonna make sure I get him a great gift or it's um, my friend's Jessica's birthday next month, right, get them a good gift or arrange a really fun activity that we can do together. So assigning that time where you really celebrate your friends or you celebrate the people in your life, even looking at holidays, uh, Christmas, Halloween, get into the festivities. Love it, you know, you may, withdraw or hold back from getting involved with these things, but maybe by actually 
bringing them out and I'm looking at people in your life and being like, hey, they they like Halloween as well. They like the thought of celebrating Halloween. Well, let's do it together then. Let's decorate our houses together. Let's get pumpkins. Let's go to Starbucks and get a pumpkin spice latte or let's buy jumpers, you know. <laughs> Basically, getting yourself into a celebrity, celebratory state of awareness with people in your life. Another thing as well is when it comes to romance and dating, oh my gosh, if you get yourself into a relationship with someone and you're romantic with them, why not be mushy and lovey-dovey and show affection and be caring towards them <laughs> you know you may just be just just have this fear of the rejection that you just withdraw you keep yourself back from wanting to like embrace that person but maybe by actually bringing bringing out that spark or that spontaneity and that fun like that lightheartedness where you're not taking it over seri overly seriously you can enter into a romantic relationship and it's just it is what it is and you just enjoy the moment together and you don't know necessarily how it's gonna go and what's gonna unfold but you just know that you're there and you're having a good time and you're joy enjoying the experience with one another of course though like I was saying earlier, it's also good to be aware of those insecure lovers who are simply just trying to use you or bring you down with them. It's really important that you learn how to cut ties, how to take yourself away from people who are just trying to steal your light. It's about really um, having enough confidence in yourself to be able to walk away. And the last way that I'm gonna suggest is by bringing out the confidence in other people. So this could be, for example, a friend of yours who you look to and you express your admiration towards them. And you say, you're so important to me. This could even be in the dating scene as well. You love someone, you're really important to me. You mean a lot to me. I, I can't express enough how you being in my life just brings me a lot of joy, a lot of happiness. And even when it comes to their own hobbies and their own creations, looking to those things and saying, wow, good job. I really like what you created there. I love this illustration or I love this piece of work that you've made or I love that outfit that you're wearing or I love this interior design that you just created as well within your home. Just looking at the people in your life and just making them feel good, making them feel good about themselves. Okay then, Cosmic Warriors, so that concludes my video on Chiron in the fifth house. So what we looked at today is the wound itself, but then also some practical tips and advice on how to heal. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And of course, if you would like to see more videos from myself and you have not yet subscribed, then go right ahead and click that subscribe button. And I will be back with another video very, very soon.